In this sponsored tutorial, we're going to check out the Wicked Folders plugin, which allows you to organize pretty much everything in your WordPress admin. This might be the last WordPress admin organization plugin you need. Because using this plugin, you can organize into folders your media library content, your posts, your pages, WooCommerce products, advanced ads, table press tables, plugins, you name it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. This is the plugin I'm going to show you today. This is the free version. There's also a pro version you can upgrade to. I'll get into the differences between the two later on in this tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're using the pro version. So we can see all the capabilities that we have available to us with the pro version. The pro version page is over here. I'll show you how to get here as well later on in the video. In fact, you can probably see it right now. Go to this page and you're there. So that's not too hard. So we have this plugin installed already, the pro version. If you want to try the free version first, go to plugins and then add new and search for wicked folders. Make sure you put a space in that name. Here it is right here. Click on install now to install it and activate to activate it. Like I said, I have the pro version installed, so I'm not gonna install the free version alongside it. If you're installing this on a live or production site, you wanna back up your site first, just in case something goes wrong. It's pretty rare these days that something goes wrong, but just in case, you wanna make sure you have a backup because it's a real lifesaver. There's a tutorial in the description down below to help you with that if you need help. And once this is installed, we have a Wicked Folders link under Settings, and then Wicked Folders. And this is where we can set the settings for the plugin. There aren't very many. We're gonna go through them later on, but first I wanna show you what this plugin actually does. So with the pro version, we can organize our media. We have a checkbox right here, meaning folders are enabled on the media page. So we're gonna check that out. Let's go to media. And we see right here, this column is our wicked folders column. Right off the bat, you're gonna see something called dynamic folders. These are folders that are automatically created and they automatically sort all of the content in whatever post type you're organizing, in our case, media. So we create a dynamic folder for authors, for dates, for extensions, extensions denoting the file types, for example, JPEG with an E, JPEG without an E, PNG, if I had PDFs or MP4s or M4Vs or whatever other file type in my media library, it would show up as a folder here and you can click on them and you can access whatever those files are by just clicking on the folder. You can go by date, let's go to 2020, so this is all the images uploaded in 2020. If I go to January, this is all the images uploaded in January of 2020. If I go to January 14th, you get the idea. All the images uploaded January 14th of 2020. If you click on this plus icon, it'll expand all the folders. So you can see them all in the hierarchy like this. You can see parent-child relationships. For example, the 16th is the child of April. April is the child of 2020 and 2020 is a child of all dates. And those are dynamic folders. So I'm gonna click on this minus, which used to be a plus to collapse everything. And under all folders, we can create our own folders by clicking on the plus right here. Give the folder a name, let's call it motorhome. Click on save. Now we have our motorhome folder. It is a child of all folders. We can add another folder under motorhome. Let's call it RV mats. Make the parent motorhome. Click on save. And now we have RV mats under motorhome. It's as simple as that to make folders. Now to put images or files into the folder, all we do is hover over the image. We see a four headed arrow appear, drag and drop that into the folder. And now it's organized into that folder. And you can select multiple at once. Let's just select that motorhome and this one and this one. Those are all motorhomes. Then find any four headed arrow beside one that you checked. Now it shows we have four items that we're dragging in here or moving into here. And that's gonna to update to five in a second, there we go. We have an RV mat here, let's put that in the RV mat folder. And this way you can organize all your images and content in your media library pretty easily into folders that makes it more easy to navigate. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. If you wanted to change an existing folder, for example, maybe you wanted to change the name of this folder, just click on it, click on the pencil, change it to whatever you want, RVing mats. You can make it not a child of motorhome or a child of something else, or make it its own parent folder. You can also clone the folder, so you have a copy of it. And if this folder had child folders underneath it, 
you can choose to clone those as well by clicking this box before you click clone folder then you have a copy of this parent folder and all the children beneath it if you don't check the child box it'll just be a clone of the folder you're currently on you can also change the owner if you have multiple users on your site this will become important when we get to permissions later on so for now i just changed the name to rving mats click on save close this and we see the name updated right there so that's fantastic you can also delete folders let's click on motorhome click on the garbage can here's a description of what's going to happen subfolders will be assigned to the folder's parent items in the folder will not be deleted that's an important point so whatever you have in this folder will not be deleted and also i forgot to mention whatever you move into the folder the url is not changed so when we moved these five motorhomes into the folder the url to get to these images doesn't change so no images are broken on the front end or whatever file type you moved into the folder i have used other plugins where when you moved them into folders it actually changed the url to get to the image which broke all the images on the front end which meant every time you moved an image to a different folder you had to update all links on the front end which was really inconvenient this plugin doesn't change the urls or the links to the images so that's great so let's go back to the deleting let's delete motorhome it will just delete motorhome all those five images still exist they're still in the media library and rv mats is now a parent folder under all folders we can delete that one as well if we want to which i do let's delete that that rv mat is not gone still there in the media library we have a couple settings as well we can choose the organization mode to be normal or sorted and you can sort by alphabetical or custom and the last thing is you can hide this panel if i scroll way down on the left hand menu here we have a toggle folders item click on it and our folders panel goes away so if you in the settings let's go back to the wicked folder settings if you've checked a box in this first enable folders column here but the folder organization tab doesn't appear click on toggle folders it's gone on this page we'll see it again in a minute but click on toggle folders and then it should appear so now that we're here let's talk about enabling folders you can enable folders on any types of pages that have a wordpress default admin dashboard for example media where we were pages plugins posts those are common on every wordpress site if you have elementor installed you'll be seeing these custom fonts icons and code and elementor templates if i hover over elementor we see the custom fonts icons and code right here and templates are here and those just appeared in this list because i have elementor installed i also have advanced ads installed right here and that added a checkbox for the ads there's also gravity form entries and gravity forms this will be on here no matter what this is programmed right into the plugin they don't use the default wordpress dashboard for that plugin and so the creator had to program gravity forms in as well as tables from table press those had to be programmed in manually by the creator this is one of the few plugins that can actually organize table press tables if you check this box right here i don't have table press installed so that's not going to do anything for us in this video there's more checkboxes down below that i just set the settings that appear inside of the organizational folder tab you saw when we were doing the folders in the media library the number of items in each folder i think that's super handy i usually have that on you can show an unassigned items folder so if you wanted to organize everything in a certain area of your site the unassigned items folder shows you the items that have not been organized yet so that's pretty handy there's folder search which i didn't show you earlier let's go there and see that now go to the media library again we have a search bar right here and you can search for folders if you have lots of folders this will be super handy we can turn folder breadcrumbs on or off those are if we go into let's go into uh, dynamic folder for february 16th 2020 we see breadcrumbs right up here these show you all the directories that your current item is in you click into any one to go into that parent directory so that's the breadcrumbs you can show folder hierarchy in the folder column you can include items from child folders in the number count and you can have it so the page does not reload when you navigate folders i think that's super handy for the dynamic folders they are by default enabled on media and pages you can have dynamic folders enabled for the other post types as well if you want just gotta check the box and they'll be there then we have a couple settings specific to media and we have a field for our license key so those are the basic settings we get to permissions later on but first i want to show you that what we just saw in the media library appears everywhere else as well so if i go to posts because we have the folders turned on there 
we see we have all the same options. We can organize all our posts in the same way that we just organized a media library. If we go to pages, we see our wicked folders column is not there. When that happens, click on toggle folders and then it appears. You also want to make sure you actually have the box checked to enable folders on this post type. If we go to the ads, because that was one of the post types where it's enabled, you see right here, you can organize your ads. If we go to plugins, it's not often you see a plugin that helps you organize your plugins. There's a lot of plugins on this site because, well, it's a, it's a niche site that I use a lot of plugins on, but also I use it for a lot of testing and stuff as well. And so there's a lot of plugins here that are inactive that I don't use because they're inactive, that I just use for testing or making videos. Either way, 42 is too many plugins. I don't recommend having this many plugins on a regular production site. But if you do have that many, for whatever reason, you can organize them really easily using Wicked folders. And so every page or every post type where you have this checkbox enabled, we can organize just the same way that we organize the media library. And there's also a really cool aspect if you have multiple users on your site, and that's permissions. In the permissions tab, we can set who has access to what. And we see a big blue button here that says new folder collection policy. We have to do that first. We have to create a policy. Then we apply the policy to the different folder collection types down here. So if I click on add new folder collection policy, I could call this admin access, for example. The permission will be the administrator. So the administrator can do all of these five things, create folders, view others folders, edit others folders, delete others folders, and assign others folders. And that means if you're signed in as the admin, these are the things that you're allowed to do. And the other roles won't be able to do any of those things. Then if I click on publish, this admin access policy will be published. And then we can come down here and we can apply it to whatever you want. So maybe the ads I wanna have only admin access, nobody else is allowed in there. Click on save policy assignments. And now we have admin access on the ads. Maybe you have a bunch of writers on your site and you want them to be able to create folders and organize their posts. Click on add new folder collection policy again. Let's call this writer organization. Now I'm gonna choose the roles that I want to be able to do something with this access. I'm gonna choose administrator, editor, and author, because this will be for creating folders to organize content. And these are the, the groups I want to have. And if I check these boxes, it auto checks all five on the right. But I don't want the author to be able to delete other people's folders. So I'll uncheck that. I also don't, don't want them to be able to view other people's folders. So I'll uncheck that. I want them to be able to create folders. So I'll keep that checked, which means the author will be able to create their own folders that no other authors can see but the editor and administrator will be able to see them. The editor and the administrator will be able to see everybody's folders, because this is checked. They'll be able to edit others' folders. We're gonna uncheck that for the author, keep that checked for the editor and administrator. The editor and admin are gonna be able to delete other people's folders. I'll keep that checked. And the editor and admin should be able to assign others' folders, but not the author. So the author can just create folders and then organize their content within those folders. And then other authors, other people with the author user role on your site will not be able to see what other authors are doing with their folders. Only the editors and admins can see that. So let's click on publish. And then under posts, let's choose writer organization. Maybe under media too. Because you want to have them add pictures and, and media to posts. So now we have writer organization applied to those two. And so you can go through and set permissions for all these levels. And what's so great about permissions, I just want to reiterate this, is it's on a per user basis. So if we, for the contributors, if they are able to create folders and we check that box, only contributors can create folders. If we have this so they can only view other people's folders, so let's say everybody can view people's folders, but nobody can create them except for the admin. The admin can do everything, but everybody else can view the folders that are created by the admin and they can use those folders as well to organize their content. I'm sure you can see how this can be very powerful. Let's go back out to here. If we wanna edit one of these policies, just hover over it, click on edit. For example, you implement a policy, you don't like how it's working out, so you wanna be able to make changes, and you can by clicking edit, making changes here, I click on update. And if you have any problems, you've probably seen these question marks throughout this tutorial. These are little tool tips that pop up and explain what each option does. So under create folders, this allows users to create folders. Users can edit, delete, and assign items to folders they create. 
they can't do that to folders others create unless we have these options checked over here. So if you have any problems understanding anything with this plugin, there is question marks all over the place in the settings. Just hover over them and it will tell you what's going on. So that's what this plugin does in a nutshell. But there are differences between the free and the pro version. If we go to the Wicked Plugins website and then go to the Wicked Folders Pro, we see a pricing table with a comparison of what each plugin can do. So the free plugin will allow us to organize pages, posts, and custom post types. What does that mean? Click on this little chevron and I'll give you more details. It allows you dynamic folders. What does that mean? Click on the chevron, it explains what that means. With the free plugin, you cannot organize media library folders, which I think is a pretty big key. A lot of people want to organize the media library more than they want to organize pages and posts. And that's not included in the free plugin. The free plugin also doesn't allow you to have user folders to organize your users, no plugin folders, no WooCommerce folders. We didn't have WooCommerce installed on that site, but had we had it installed, we would have seen many more checkboxes. If I go back to settings of Wicked folders, we would have seen many more checkboxes in here for WooCommerce products, orders, coupons, and what else? That's it, products, orders, and coupons for WooCommerce. So you can organize those in the back end if you have lots of each of those categories, hopefully lots of orders. Organize gravity forms and table press folders and allow folder permissions, which we saw at the end of this tutorial. That's pretty awesome, the folder permissions, having that available. And most of those things, as you can see, are with the pro versions. There are two pro versions. And so you get a one site license for $49. That's what you pay up front for the first year. And then when you renew it for the second year, third and fourth and beyond, you get 50% off. So then it's only $24.5. And for the agency edition, you have unlimited site licenses and you also get half off whenever you renew. So you have to have an active subscription. You can't just buy it this year and then renew it five years from now. You have to buy it this year for $149, but then every year's renewal is only half of the price that you see listed here. So if you want continuous plugin updates and you want to get the 50% off the renewal, you have to make sure you keep your subscription active. If you like what you saw with Wicked Folders, I encourage you to check out the free version to play with it to see how easy it is. And if you want to upgrade, come over here and upgrade because it's a great plugin. If you haven't done so yet, now is a great time to increase your site speed because search engines now care about site speed and it's a ranking factor. So check out this playlist right here to help you speed up your WordPress site and make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab. Till next time. Keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.